All right. All right. We are officially live, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in, good morning. Um, we're on the Eastern time zone, so it's early 10 a.m. for us. Comment below where you're from, what time zone is it, what it is, if it's afternoon, evening, whatever it is for y'all. Uh, but today, got a very special guest. If you guys uh, recognize him, I had him on a previous podcast uh, on my channel, Chris, H Mr. Chris Hannon. How you doing today, bro? Good. It's a beautiful day. You know, it's not that early. 10 a.m. is not early. This is we're, <laughs> right. we're in a good part of the day. Yeah. Um, beautiful day today, sunny. Yeah, can't can't wait to can't wait to talk about what we're going to talk about today, and hopefully some, provide some value. So it's going to be a good conversation. Absolutely, man. I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, for the people that maybe didn't check out that last podcast, just give like a quick brief introduction to just who you are and you know kind of the things you got going on. Yeah, so my name is Christopher Hannon. I'm 24. I've uh, been very passionate about personal development and, and mindset for years. And I've learned a lot through several different business adventures. Uh, ventures. Currently, I have one called Piece of the Sea where I sell. Uh, it's a brand I started from scratch, February 2020. And I sell authentic main sea glass jewelry and other apparel. And it's really just about helping people un understand that each person is very unique. So each journey that you go through, it helps you become who you are and uniquely beautiful. So from broken to beautiful, that's how sea glass is made. That's mm -hmm. how you're made. So that's kind of what I do right now. I currently also trade. And so I got those two, two things are my big adventures right now. So staying, uh, staying very focused. It's, it's been very, a lot of learning experience, but mm -hmm. I've got a lot to share with everybody. Love that. Yeah, man. I, I love the idea for the brand and everything. Um, I've checked out some jewelry. I haven't purchased any quite yet, but that's definitely on my list, bro. Cause that stuff Gotta looks, looks sweet. I, uh, I'll leave the links down below too. If you guys want to check out his stuff, you know, anything that his socials and his, uh, his, his website, I'll leave all that stuff below. Um, if you guys want to check it out, but I think that segues perfectly into the topic that we're going to discuss today, which is if you guys are checking out the, the thumbnail, and the title of the video, it's basically building consistency because I know that can be one of the hardest things that guys, really everybody goes through when you're on this personal development journey. Yes, getting started is hard, but how do you just like keep the things going once you're already in it and doing it? So I know Chris has a lot to say about that. So I'm going to turn it over to you and and just ask you outright, you know, with you can you can apply to the business or just whatever you're doing now, how important is it to have that consistency with just the things that you're doing in life your goals yeah that's a great question because you know the first step is always going to be getting started finding that motivation you know getting all the things lined up for where you need to start doing something sometimes the first decision is to just make the decision and that right. can be very difficult for a lot of people especially when you're jumping into new territory that's very scary mm -hmm. um but the truth is that is the lowest level of entry that is like stepping in the building before you even talk to anybody it's like going to a bar Facts. and just making the decision to go out have a drink and go socialize you've walked into the front door and now what and mm -hmm. so the consistency is really 95 percent of the decision mm -hmm. and and your progress and so it's kind of it is kind of the critical the quintessential piece for moving forward at all because without consistency, you're going to be fly by night, you're going to burn out, and you're going to find yourself really going nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. So consistency, consistency is a very key part of going wherever you want to go. Yeah, I would I would agree with that 100%. Because like, consistency, and I love the way that you put it with the decision making, because it truly is a decision. You know, once you commit to that, whether it's a a 90 day, uh, fitness journey, or whether that's, a uh, uh, no fap, you want to commit to it for 90 days, or if it's a content production, you're putting out content every day for 90 days or whatever it is, you know, that decision is made before you even start. And like, kind of like the, the foundation is set. And like, once you start moving, that's when it kind of shows you your, just your accountability and your discipline with yourself. Mm -hmm. So, I agree, man, a hundred percent. Like consistency is, is the freaking, I mean, people look for like secret pills and like magic formulas to be successful. And like, honestly, it's like 
a couple things like discipline, consistency, action, accountability. You know, it's not sexy, but that's that's what works. Yeah, and and I like to look at it in three different levels. This is kind of how action can be like di- it can be um distilled into these three different categories, and so they they each yeah. progressively get higher. And as you become a, a better man, a better person, you're going to start to realize that you move through these different tiers of action. And so the first level yeah. is motivation. This is the lowest level. This is tier one. Motivation is mm-hmm. making the decision and finding that that fuel to get started on doing whatever you want to do. So that's finding that first step, mm-hmm. whatever that may be. Maybe you have a breakup. I know revenge bodies, big time motivation for a lot of people. For sure. You know, maybe it could be just one day you get made fun of for being fat and all of a sudden you're at the pool mm-hmm. and you're like, damn, maybe I do need to make a change. And that pisses you off and you decide to go forward for it. For me, one of the one of the biggest pieces of motivation I ever had in my whole life was uh, when I was 17, I was in a company called Lavelle and I was just trying, I was just getting started in this whole journey. So it was like seven years ago at this point, which is crazy. But mm-hmm. what I realized is that I was just trying to make something in my life. I grew up in a very poor situation um, and I was trying to get out and I was doing my best and I was in this business. And I remember one day I went, to lunch with my two younger brothers where I was 17. My other brother was, would have been 14. And then my other brother would have been like six or seven. And so they're all, we're all pretty young. And my grandmother just like, for whatever reason, went off on me. I don't know what her deal was. She just, <laughs> I hate to use this term, but she's just a hater. And I don't know what her deal was. Yeah. She looked at me and she goes, I wish you'd stop doing that. You know, mm. you're never going to be successful. You think that you're better than everybody else. You think that, you know, you think that, you think that you're going to get out of the rat race? You won't. You won't. Jeez. And she's, I'm not even, this is not an exaggeration. It's her telling me to my face, saying all these things in front of my two younger brothers, by the way. Mm-hmm. And so when she looked at me and she was saying, you know, you think you're arrogant. You think you're so much better than everybody else. You think you're this, you think you're that. You're never going to make it straight up. I think about that. And if that isn't motivation for someone like me, I don't know what else is. So I, I, mm-hmm. I always, have that spark in the back of my head if i ever get to a wall and i need that motivation like i'm just defeated nothing else is working my backstop is remembering her face Mm. and just and just realizing that if i need that impetus to get going that Mm. is one of those situations and so maybe you have something similar people watching maybe it's again maybe you get called fat maybe you get made fun of maybe girl dumps you cheats on you does this does that maybe you realize that you're really not going anywhere in life and you kind of need to take a look at yourself and just say, I'm a, I'm being kind of a loser right now. Mm -hmm. And that anger, that whatever emotion pops up for you, whether it's like anger, dissatisfaction, discomfort, whatever it is, that's going to be your first tier. That's motivation to get started, to make that decision. Mm -hmm. The second layer is discipline. All right. Discipline is sort of what we're talking about, but we're going to move into the third tier. We'll talk about these two right here. So when it comes to discipline, Discipline is when you not only have the motivation to show up, but you show up every day despite whatever is going on. You show up at a consistent rate, consistency, and you execute on the things that you know are going to help you move towards where you want to go. So discipline is is basically showing up no matter what, Mm -hmm. all right? And then you've got the third level, and this is where everybody should be striving to get to. And I, I have not yet gotten to this level at as much of a basis as I'd like to because it's a very... I mean, it's just like that next God level stuff Mm -hmm. and it's called, uh, diligence. So Mm -hmm. diligence is diligence is not only having discipline and motivation, but it's executing at the highest level every single time, no matter what Mm -hmm. it is not going through the motions. Discipline can sometimes be showing up and executing at a hundred percent when you have a hundred percent and then executing at, you know, 60% when you have those days that you execute 60%, but you still show up. Diligence mm-hmm. is saying, no matter what, under any circumstances, as a matter of principle as a man, I'm showing up and giving. I will go into my mind and I'll find that extra gear to be diligent about this task and move forward. And so mm-hmm. these three these three tiers are something that you can use to kind of like build your framework and ask yourself questions like, where are you? Where are mm-hmm. you? Are you just motivated? Are you disciplined or are you diligent? And likely you're going to be motivated, disciplined, or diligent in several different areas of your life. You know, maybe mm-hmm. you're very, maybe you're very diligent when it comes to going out and drinking. You know, you can be that guy that goes out, goes hard. You know, that mm-hmm. is, there is a time for that. Maybe you're diligent when it comes to your exercise. 
but you're very motivated or not motivated at all or not showing up at all when it comes to your dating life or it comes to your business or it comes to your finances. Maybe when it comes to your social skills, you're not even showing up at all because you're too nervous. Mm -hmm. So you can, you got to kind of look at this, your faith, everything. So yeah. everything in your life can show up under these three things. And so consistency, when you want to develop it, it's going to start with assessing where you are and understanding the different levels of consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot of great things in there with what you just said. I think a lot of guys, and I'm speaking for myself too, sometimes like we don't even reach that level of diligence because we're so just, we're kind of just going through the motions and that kind of comes into like complacency and you know, you're bringing up things like um, routine and just like not staying uh, like you're saying, staying motivated. And I think like motivation is such a, it's funny we're talking about this because I was just saying this uh, like last week about motivation. It's such a fleeting thing. And mm -hmm. it's such a, it's such like a fairy tale type of like energy that people kind of try. I think they rely too much on mm -hmm. because you could be really motivated one day and to go out and just crush your goals, like hit the gym five, four days a week straight and just kill it. And then the next week, your motivation is at zero. And you're like, mm -hmm. ah, I don't want to fucking do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. And like, I think if people rely solely on motivation, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I think too many people rely just on that. And I think it's it's wrong because then you're going to be just riding the wave like a roller coaster. Some days you're up, some days you're down. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just too, you know, full circle to kind of bring it back. It's too inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So like... I always try to tell people instead of motivation, you should kind of rely on just straight discipline and like straight accountability and like focusing on the action in like, that's why meditation is so important because you're being present. And when you're present with that thing, you're not like, cause I think motivation is like you're, you're anticipating it and you're thinking about it and then it becomes fun. But like, the weird thing about action is like when you're starting to do it, when you actually take the action, that's when you get that feeling of like, hell yeah, I'm like in this thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it comes mm -hmm. with the action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, there's a great phrase that says like emotion follows motion, you know, yeah, your right. motion, your motion creates emotion. And so exactly. it's interesting what you said. So a lot of people just misunderstand what motivation is, you know, motivation is like a shower. You mm -hmm. gotta take it every day. You gotta have it every day. <laughs> right. You know, some of the ways that I stay motivated because without, without motive, Again, it's a tier, it's like a pyramid. You can't have it without the bottom layer. So you got motivation, discipline, mm -hmm. diligence. If you don't have motivation, the whole thing collapses. Yeah. So motivation is an important key part. It's just not the end. And right. a lot of people get that, get that mixed up. They don't understand the framework. And so for me, some of my motivating factors are, I love to listen to two of my favorite artists are Russ and YG, uh, I'm sorry, not YG, Russ and Nipsey Hussle. Mm -hmm. Russ and Nipsey Hussle, those two, if you listen to their music, their music is all just, it's very motivated. It's very uplifting. It's focused. It's hustle music. And yeah. and when I put that on in the morning, when I wake up, when I roll out of bed and there's some days where I'm just like, fuck this shit. Like <laughs> I'm still, I'm like, it just does in and, and I have this, this, this thing. That's a good time for me to develop strategies where we have technology. We have people like you, we have people all over the place that can provide that energy. The other day mm -hmm. I was listening to a, I was having a real, tough day with some with some personal things and mm -hmm. i still have to execute and so i put on some david goggins motivation because that dude is that dude is a fucking beast get you so, jacked. oh it gets me so jacked and so you know what despite all the mental roadblocks that you have it's it's really roadblocks you set up in your mind and sometimes that motivation is just helps you punch through mm -hmm. and then you can kind of hit it's almost like breaking the sound <laughs> barrier it's like you shake 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 the plane shakes right before it breaks through and then as soon as it breaks the sound barrier, it's smooth sailing. Yeah. So that's motivation. It's like that that booster where you get through. Mm -hmm. But then you kind of stay on the gas. Because if yeah. I break the sound barrier and then I let off the gas, I'm going right behind it. I'm going to fall apart. My whole plane's going to disintegrate. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's, that's important. Meditation is big. Um, but, yeah, everything you said is spot on. Mm-hmm. Let's I, I want to touch on that for a second, because I, I think that's like a very key thing that gets missed a lot when it comes to just personal development, like work on it yourself. It's like people think that once you get to a certain point, it's like, oh, man, I'm good. I could, I could just coast because now I have all these things. Mm -hmm. Now I have the 
you know, the body that I want, the girlfriend that I want, the money that I want, the business mm -hmm. that I want. And they think, oh, well, I'm just going to, I'm good now. I can just stop working. But mm -hmm. I think you just alluded to this. Like when you get to that point, that's the time to work even harder because if you do let the foot off the gas a little bit, you do take it easy. That's how you can easily lose those things. Like just as it's funny that like, this is, this is so true with like fitness and with success and with anything mm -hmm. like you can gain it. It takes a lot to really gain results. It's like really hard to get going, but it's so fucking easy to lose. If you're just like one weekend, I'm just binge eating. I could lose all my fitness progress for the week. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It took me seven days to get to. So it's, it's just crazy that 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 balance of going hard, but then also like once you get there, staying there because it's not going to go, it's going to go away if you don't keep it up. Yeah. And, and I can tell you from personal experience, I'll raise my hand and say that that happened to me this year a little bit. Yeah. So what, what ended up happening is um, right now, currently I'm doing this program called 75 hard. If you don't know what that is, go ahead and just Google it. But quickly, mm -hmm. anyway, I started this because just like you said, everything that we gain, is perishable right. nothing you cannot live off of yesterday's meal because mm -hmm. you ate because you ate yesterday does not mean that you're going to live for another five months without eating mm -hmm. you need to eat you need to eat every day you need to do what you need to do mm -hmm. and so so i this winter i got COVID in september i lost quite a bit of weight i lost like 15 pounds in a week i got pretty sick but I was trying, this is how this started is I, I was in pretty good shape, you know, had like baby abs going on. I wasn't like super shredded, but I was in like really good shape mm -hmm. and strong and all that. And so after I lost that weight, I got down to like, I think after the summer I was at like 160, which is pretty good. 160, I'm five, eight. And then I ended up getting down to like 142. So I lost like about 18 mm -hmm. pounds actually in that wow. week. So I was really weak. I had lost, I mean, like it was crazy. And so to gain that that weight back, I I started eating a lot of desserts, which was fine because I wanted to gain my my muscle back. I was trying to eat as much as I could. I didn't care if it was junk or what. Mm -hmm. But the pro the problem was is that as the fall time rolled around, that continued a little bit. That continued for it was only about two and a half months, two and a half months. But I went from having abs to all of a sudden I'm kind of chunky a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm a little chunky. Mm -hmm. I got a little. I had a little. A little double chin going on just i had a, a little bit of i remember what the the biggest thing was i i have i've always had this bicep vein right here and it, and it yeah. went away and yeah. went away and i looked and i couldn't even flex and get abs and so i was like <laughs> Arms are the worst. yeah i was like fuck man i was like i'm kind of getting <laughs> fat i'm like what the, what yeah. happened <laughs> so i've been i i was consistent for years right six six seven years since i was like 15 i really started going to the gym so it was like five six seven years all of a sudden I have this period of time, three months mm -hmm. where I just let off the gas. I say, I'm yeah. tired. Mm. I don't want to do this any longer. All of yep. a sudden I'm getting fluffy. And then throughout the whole winter, I spent all this time trying to, trying to lose that again. But here's the problem is I kept showing up, but I was showing up without my head in the game. Mm -hmm. And so, and so for almost all winter from like January until like May, I tried to drop my body fat percentage and it was stuck at like 18%, 18.1 or so. Hmm. And it was stuck. And dude, I was, I was trying what I could. I was doing what I could. I tried like, you know, fasting, going to work out at the gym. I tried to eat less. I felt starving all the time. I never had a diet in my life. I've always been skinny, had a gain. I mm. never had dealt with this. Yeah. So anyway, no, needle, needle was not moving, right? It was for week, for, for months, it was not moving. Until I decided, you know, fuck this shit. I'm going hard. And I had this voice in my head that said, you need to do 75 hard again. And 75 hard is a mm -hmm. huge commitment. It's 75 days in a row of two workouts a day. One has to be outside, 45 minutes each, a gallon of water, read 10 pages of a book every day, take a progress picture, and follow a diet with no alcohol and no cheat meals. Zero deviation, zero compromise. Mm -hmm. Zero. Zero. And if you compromise, you start on day one again. Day one zero compromise a lot of people don't understand that that <laughs> that means if you eat one fucking m m when you say you can't have desserts you start over on day one if you say if you say no dairy and you have a taste of soup that had dairy in it fucking start <laughs> over i'm talking if you drink one ounce less of water you need to start over mm -hmm. and so here's the crazy part i went from motivation and what you would call like discipline 
what I thought was I was going to the gym seven days a week from January to May, late May. Needle did not move. Hmm. Fast forward, fast forward to the last 35 days. And since starting 75 hard, I've become diligent in these things. Detail, very diligent. I go hard at the gym. I have to, when I'm doing my outdoor workout, I'm not just walking. I'm switching it on and I am, I'm hauling ass and I'm down 13 and a half pounds and like 3% body fat in 35 days. Nice. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I got the abs back, abs back, everything. I'm feeling strong. I'm at like a really good weight. I didn't even think I had 13 pounds to lose, dude. I thought I had like five pounds. Right, right. But that's a, that, that 2% extra effort between discipline and diligence. That was the difference for me. Yeah. And I mean, I'm only 35 days through. I can't, I don't even know where I'm going to be in another 40 days. I mean, mm -hmm. that's crazy. If I lost 13 mm -hmm. pounds and I got, I got pretty much shredded. I'm down 3% body fat, almost below 15%. Dude, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference right there. So when you feel like you have those days where you're just not, not able to move, you need to really assess yourself and feel, and it becomes a personal issue. You need to say, these are my standards and I right. will not compromise on this because if it's about external stuff, it doesn't matter. You're going to mm. always find ways to excuse yourself away from doing what you need to do. When it mm. becomes a personal matter and externals do not matter, you're going to really start to find that next level and that next gear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I love everything you said. And I think what it really comes down to, the key thing that I believe that men watching this should take away is that standard. And uh, I talk about this a lot on my channel, but it's so freaking true that like everything really comes down to your standards. If you have a high level of standards and you think that you deserve X, Y, Z, you think you deserve the best and you treat yourself as such, you're going to show up to that standard every single day. But this, the inverse can be true. If you have a low level of standards and you think, well, I deserve the bare minimum. I'm just like average. I don't think I could ever have more. That's how you're going to show up in yourself. And so like, Ed Milet has a good quote about this. He says that everything's like a thermostat. So if you set mm -hmm. the th internal thermostat to 70, 80 degrees, really, really hot, even if you leave the doors open and like you have the windows open, the shutters, all that shit, the, the house is going to regulate and, and go back up to that, that temperature because that's where you set the thermostat. But if it was low, same thing would happen. It could be hot as fuck outside. It could be fucking... You know what I mean? Like sun could be beaming in the windows. But if you have the thermostat at 60 or 50, so low as fuck, like freezing, it's mm -hmm. still going to go down to that that level because that's what the the internal gauge is set. And I, I love the way he used that analogy to to people because it's kind of the same thing. Like if you you truly feel that your standard is I'm going to the gym four days a week and I'm eating this kind of diet, I'm you know, in my case, I'm posting this amount of time per day. I'm, I'm making this amount of time to film, to edit, to do all this, to set into my schedule. Like when that's a standard, it's not even like a conversation that you have with yourself. It's like, I'm, I'm literally doing this because that's, that's like the goals that I have. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's such a difference. I think when you have that standard. Yeah. And a lot of it, like with your standards, it comes down to things like even deeper. It's, 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 why do I do the yeah. four days a week of the gym. Why am I that type of person that eats this? Why am I the type of person? Mm -hmm. Here's a, here's one you hear all the time. You know, I'm not paid to do that. You're at job. You're right. at work. I'm not paid to do that. That's somebody else's job. I'm not paid to do that. I don't have to do that. It's not my job description. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the bus. If you work in a restaurant, you know what? I don't need to clear my table. I don't need to bring dishes back. That's a buster's job, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't need to sweep. I don't need to sweep the floor. That's not my job. That's the dishwasher job. I don't need to go back and help with dishes. That's that's the dishwasher job. They get paid for it. I'm gonna go chill. Mm -hmm. That that comes down to like, what type of person are you? That's what yeah. your standards. The standards really tell you about yourself. It's like I mm -hmm. am the type. I am the type of person that, if you finish that sentence, yep. I am the type of person that runs that extra minute on the treadmill. I am that type of person that goes and when I see something needs to be done, I do it. For no other reason, I'm not getting compensated for it. I'm not getting praised for it. And somebody may never, ever see it. But it's just about being diligent as a human being, as a man, especially. Yeah. And if you want to get deep about it, energy always comes back. I just read two great books, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success and The, Law, the Power of Intention by Wayne Dyer. The other one is Deepak mm. Chopra. 
crazy, crazy, crazy because I read those and I was like, holy shit. Because like it made me understand that like your intent and your energy and these things that sound so woo woo mm -hmm. really are it all it literally matters because it when does. you're a diligent human being, I'll tell you what, here's one thing, sidetrack a little bit. When I started 75 hard in the summertime in Maine, I'm 24, I'm single. I'm like, you know what? This is going to hurt my, th here's the conversation I had in my head. I was like, I want to go out and enjoy my summer. I want to go have some drinks. I want to, I don't want to not date. I don't want to not go mm -hmm. hang out with girls. I don't mm -hmm. want to feel like I have to say no to all these activities, blah, 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 blah. It was the man. Let me tell you what I knew that I needed to do it so bad because my bitch voice was so fuck, like louder than I had remembered <laughs> in years. Like I'm telling you, it was yeah. crazy. It was like nonstop, incessant, incessant voice just with excuses after. And they were good excuses too. They were valid. That's the thing. They were mm -hmm. valid. Right. But let me tell you what, when you put out that energy and you become the type of person that does these things that are diligent, I mean, I'll tell you what, my dating's never been better. I feel <laughs> I'm more alluring. I had this, so I served tables part time. And the other night I had a table and, and my manager said it was four beautiful girls. Like I'm telling you, <laughs> fucking bombshells. So anyway, they're like, they're like, go, go take my manager likes to poke fun me. Oh, go take the picture, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So I do. Long story short, they find me extraordinarily charming. We have a very good conversation. And I ended up hanging out with them after work. Won't go into details, but we ended up hanging out. And so <laughs> very very attractive and it was in it and i was sober we went to this bar and hung out and they're like yeah you want to drink and i'm like no i'm not drinking right now i just have a soda water they're like what what the mm. fuck and the, at first they were like what the fuck and then just lean back and say this is why i'm doing it they're like that's attractive they're like that's fucking hot they're like that's mm -hmm. i need i need to do that yeah and so and so when you become this type of person that has high standards as a man especially women like it they like it if you don't find it. any other motivation out of out of anything Mm -hmm. here's the thing with with girls i swear to god i feel like it's i feel like i've been a born again person because take everything <laughs> you think take everything you think you know about chicks and what you think you should do and just literally reverse it and you'll have the answers that you need so if you tell a girl no i'm busy i'm doing this i cannot spend time with you she may pout feel like whatever and you may feel like you hurt her feelings or you're gonna push her away she's gonna go find someone else not the case never <laughs> not, not the case when you tell her baby girl i got shit to do you cannot i can see you for two hours on tuesday next week that's gonna have to work for you she loves it mm -hmm. i don't know i do not know why because it's just not that as a man logical brain that doesn't seem to work but with for whatever reason female brain that's how it works so if you have no other reason to be diligent listen tell you what your game will never be better because Literally. you're gonna feel you're gonna feel confident in yourself you're gonna you're gonna be in shape smart sharp confident handsome and you have this radiance i don't know what it was because i ever since i started 75 hard even people at work respond to me differently mm -hmm. and i work with a lot of girls almost all girls i'm like one of two dudes that work at this place i don't know what it was one day i was not on 75 hard the next day i was i don't know what it was just i'm getting <laughs> different responses and i i don't know what it is it's like alpha energy or something i don't know what it is but i'll tell you what a lot of reasons to be diligent because it will never serve you wrong, especially as a man. So never. Yeah, it's it's crazy how that how that all happens. And so where was I going with that? Basically, just like we are standards. It, as you become a person of standards, mm -hmm. people are gonna start to have that reputation around you. You're gonna start getting more opportunities. You're gonna you're gonna open the door, you're gonna open the world up for yourself. Your there reputation you and your energy and your standards are gonna come higher. And mm -hmm. if you wanna get Here's a good phrase. You don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. Yeah. So if you're hang, if you feel like all of your friends are losers, likely you're a loser too. No offense. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I would if I'm hanging out with hoe girls and I'm being a hoe, I'm gonna get hoes. Exactly. <laughs> if I want to attract a high level person and I want to attract some good quality women, mm -hmm. I had to change myself and stop being a hoe. And so then, all the <laughs> yeah. Time, I mean, I'm just being honest with everybody here. And then I attracted True. like, yeah, it's, it's crazy how it works. So that's kind of my, my thing. I feel like I'm going to see all these dudes commenting like, bro, I got to start 75 hard. I'll start getting laid. Like all these dudes no, do I'm just to get some chicks. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I will not lie to you. <laughs> it works. <laughs> that is hilarious. I but like you're, you're right though. I mean, you're not wrong. Cause like, so just to, obviously it's a segue into, into women, but like it's, 
it's it's a good thing to talk about this because that does like people think that oh well dude if i'm like standards like whatever whatever like how's that attract women but like honestly it does like like. it it, like again and i've said this in so many videos but like masculinity is about leading femininity is following so if you have a solid base of like this is the kind of man i want to be this is how i'm showing up this is what i'm going to do this is what i establish for myself what's a girl going to do she's like holy fuck that's attractive like he can provide he can fucking create resources he's a guy mm-hmm. that can protect me and like it's so funny you say that because like i literally was just hanging out with my girlfriend before we hopped on the call and uh she stayed over last night and uh i woke up i was like hey babe like i gotta hop on a call soon i gotta get showered and like obviously she wants to hang out with me but i'm like i can't i gotta i gotta hop on this call with my man and then i got busy i got yeah i got stuff i gotta do so like she was a little disappointed, obviously. She was like, oh, right. like kind of pounding, but not yeah, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but then like afterwards, I was like, I got to do what I got to do. And like she, even though she won't admit it, like she respects that and she likes mm-hmm. that. She wants mm-hmm. me to be busy because if I was just like a complete simp and just like spent all my time with her all the, like every day, had nothing else that I was doing, like she might not know what's happening, but she just won't feel as attracted to me as she does. It's just a real so quick example of that. So I was talking to, like I said, I work with mostly chicks and, um, and, uh, I was telling the other day that some dude was, I was trying to, so I've got this dude in, he's like 19 and he's like a younger dude. And he's kind of like a little dorky. He's a good guy, but he's just a little bit like, yeah, I don't even want to say beta, but like the dude just needs some guidance, right? He needs some of right. this, like, he needs some a push. Coaching. Yeah. So he, so I got, I got him on three books, Higher Status, The Way of the Superior Man, and No More Mr. Nice Guy. And I've been sending him like YouTube videos and things like that. And I was mm-hmm. trying to explain to him, dude, I was like, listen, I was actually, it was actually to Marcus. Marcus is having girlfriend trouble and he doesn't understand why. And I go, listen, here's how I had, there was like four or five chicks. They're about my age. They're about like between 20 and 25. Mm-hmm. And I go, I go, you can't be too nice. And and they didn't understand what that meant. And they all all the women were like, Oh, what the fuck does that mean? You know, <laughs> you want to be a, be a douchebag? And I'm like, No, I'm like, here's an example. If I were oh, yeah. to come up to you and I'd be like, Babe, you are literally like the most perfect thing ever. Like, I just want to kiss your feet. You can never do anything wrong. Like, I love you. You're so beautiful. You never have a bad day. Like, blah, 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 oh, blah, blah. Man. No, you should have seen their faces. Their faces, all of them without even noticing, they're just like disgusted they were like yeah. they got that curled up like they smelled something bad they were like you they're like oh i don't like that i go here's what you need to do i go babe you're really cute but like your forehead's kind of big all of them all, <laughs> all of them started laughing and they were like getting all like weird and i'm like it's so fucked up because it's like i'm like you're very cute but like your forehead's a little big and it's just mm. like little douchebags that it's obviously a playful fun but yeah but the point of that story being you would think that when it comes to women, now we've moved on to why consistency is important in your dating life, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, when you say, no, I'm busy, can't do that, you would think your girlfriend is gonna pout. Like, I, I've been mm-hmm. seeing this girl pretty seriously for like the last probably like five weeks or so. Met her, I went to college with her, I met her at a bar passing by anyway. We started hanging out, she's cool. Man, she, I had her over the other day and I'm like, I'm like, you can stay until two and then I gotta get going and do my thing. Dude, the whole, it was a pain. It was like painful to get her to leave. Like she wouldn't leave, <laughs> but and she's pouting. Like it's really hard to leave you. I don't want to. She's acting all put out. <laughs> Man, I'm like, you gotta go, dude. I'm busy. Like yeah. fucking get out of here. I'm sorry, <laughs> but anyway, that you would think that that was gonna be bad, but then like later she texts me. And she's like, you know what? Like I'm really glad we got to spend some time with you. I really value and respect your time. I understand that you're really you're busy and you're on your path. And I like really that's really hot to me. Hmm. Again, no again, secret. you would think you would think she's gonna be mad, she's gonna be upset, she's gonna hold a grudge. No, yeah. consistency and discipline and diligence in your whole life is really going to. There's almost no downside. Mm-hmm. The only downside you could say is is that when it comes to this thing, these scenarios of figuring out discipline and consistency, you are gonna have to have what's. It, there's no such thing as balance. Okay, balance is bullshit. Let me tell you what there is. There's sacrifices and trade offs. Mm. that's it i like that you there is no balance you know for me i'm not the type of dude that goes out all the time i go out every once in a while like if i have my friends who I, or live in different parts of the country they come back we go out we have mm-hmm. fun right or i take a trip every like you know three four five months and we go ape shit like i go crazy 
on those trips and I make time for that. That's all I'm focused on. But mm-hmm. I don't go out every weekend. I'm in bed at like 10, 11. I wake up, I go to the gym, I eat good. I don't fuck around. I don't really talk to many people. I, I got to stay where I'm at. Mm. So the reason I do that is because my, my aim is to become successful, make enough money where I'm under nobody's thumb ever, right. have money where I can make re- work remotely and provide value to people. That requires consistency. My sacrifice is social life. I've got people mm-hmm. hit me up all the time. We got to go out. You know, we got to do this. We gotta, and it's not a bad thing, but I just, I can't. I'm, mm-hmm. not that ex- I'm not that accessible to them. Right. And so that's a sacrifice because I would love to see these people. But at the same time, I'm sacrificing them because what's more important to me right now is my passion, my purpose, what I'm, what I'm aiming at. Even if you're not that passionate about, if you're trying to get somewhere, you have fucking go ham. Like casualties expected, prisoners not taken, you got to go, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, that's important. Well, I love that you bring that up because it's kind of the other side to the coin when you're talking about consistency, because it's it's so funny, like everything that we're saying, I kind of just talked about in a recent video, but the one I just made was saying like, there's literally what you said, those trade-offs, like when you're kind of naturally putting more focus and more energy into one area of your life, another area of your life is going to, you know, you're going to lose time. You're going to lose some uh, focus in another area. It's just that's just how it works. It's like a scale. Mm-hmm. Like if you're putting way more time in your personal development, your income, your your work, your business, whatever, you're naturally not you're probably not going to go out as much. You're probably not going to drink as much. You're probably not going to have as much fun on the weekends with your friends. Not that you can never do those things, but to naturally see this grow, something's going to have to shrink. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy that – um some guys think that they can have it all and they can do it all, but it's like you, you can only dedicate yourself and like, you can only be that locked into something um, for so long. Cause like mm-hmm. we end up burning out, we end up just like feeling overwhelmed. So I know for me, like, so that's what I had to do with the content. Right. I remember the last time we talked, it's, it's funny bringing this like completely full circle. The last time we had talked, you were telling me about posting daily and like doing, you know, daily content going crazy. Well, Man, since June, I haven't missed an upload. I've been doing it every single fucking day. YouTube, Good work. Instagram, TikTok, bro, everything. And yeah, I'm not like a crazy brand right now. It's not popping off like I want it to be, but it's just the principle of like showing up for myself and showing up for the business every single day. There was a couple of days where I almost missed. It was like 11.54 and I mm. almost missed an upload. And I'm like, fuck, I totally forgot about it because like I was like doing stuff the whole day. And I was like, all right, I'm laying in bed. And my, my girlfriend's like laying next to me. I'm like, hey, hold on for a second. I got to post this real quick. And like just instantly was like back in that zone of like, I got mm-hmm. to do this. And um, there was times even when I was like doing stuff, like I would have to tell family or like friends, like, hey, I maybe there's like a dinner or like a, a graduation party we had to go to. I was like, okay, I'll go to that, but I got to finish this stuff first. Then I'll go to the graduation party. Then I'll have fun. So it's like, Man, I think it comes back to standards. Like when you have those standards and you commit to the path, you know, you got to show up and like everything else is kind of like, it sounds messed up, but everything else is like second, third, fourth priority. It's not number one. A hundred percent. And some people are, you have to be okay with accepting a couple of things. You have to be okay with being misunderstood, yeah. mislabeled, you know, back right. to the story about my grandmother. Like I haven't seen her in two years because you know what? We had yeah. another incident where she called me a stuck up arrogant cocksucker, <laughs> you know what I mean? Jeez. Because for whatever reason, you know, and this is how she truly feels about me, or at least when she's angry and I don't know what her deal is, mm-hmm. but guess what? I'm, she does not understand me, but then I have other people like this girl I'm talking to or my family, they, they, mm-hmm. they see me and they respect me. And yeah. so guess what? You're going to have to be misunderstood. You're going to have to miss some things, but I mm-hmm. promise you what's more satisfying than having fun is winning. And, you yep. doing the things you want to do when I can look at somebody in the eyes and I go, I do this and mm. I know it and they know it, man, I, nothing can shake me. If mm. I know something and I know I put in the work, like if I know somebody, if I know every day for the last 35 days, I've gone and done two work. I've done 70 workouts in the last 35 days. <laughs> I've drank 35 gallons of water. I have not eaten any fucking junk at all. Mm. I'm cut. I'm educated. I'm getting shit done. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I can look at people and I can tell them honestly, like that's, this is what I do. Yeah. And this is where I'm going. That self-belief and that self-confidence and that assuredness is worth more than some other random person who doesn't even like themselves approval. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Fuck them. Like literally mm-hmm. go eat, eat shit. Like I don't care if mm-hmm. you want to. And, and it took me a while to get like that because I used to be very, sometimes I even still am insecure about how people feel about me because you know, everybody wants to feel liked. Sure. But listen, Hey, I'm not here to be really understood. Cause I understand people like you, my two best friends, my brothers, my mom, the people who matter to me, they understand. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the people, they're just late. They don't understand. They can't see because they don't have vision, which is really the next thing I want to f- I want to finish up with, with like being Support. consistent, being consistent, because it's really just like the next part is vision. But yeah, man, it's about sacrifices and trade offs. There mm-hmm. is no such thing. There's no such thing as balance. Balance is bullshit. Mm hmm. I like that. That's an interesting. That's an interesting thought too, because excuse me. It, you know, people talk about the work-life balance. They talk about having one thing and then having it with the other. Which I don't. I mean, I guess in some instances, balance can work. But I think what you're. I, I get what you're saying. Like when it comes to equilibrium, uh, might be a better better way to put yeah. it. Equilibrium, and it's individual for each person. That's the other thing is that it's yeah. it's based on based on who you are as a person because. You know, yeah. balance, what I consider balance is going to seem like right, bullshit, right. bullshit to like someone like Kobe Bryant. I mean, that dude, he did nothing but play basketball. Yeah, nothing. Literally. Nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Like, literally. fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's his balance. Right. That's true. And look at him. Now he's remembered as one of the top probably three players of all time, top five players of all time. Mm-hmm. So, it's equilibrium for each person. That is true. Yeah, everybody has their unique set of balance because like my my balance could look like i'm working fucking every day and then small doses of fun are like every other weekend or once a month or whatever it is but to somebody else that's like oh dude i'll work monday through friday saturday sunday i'm fucking partying every weekend so like mm-hmm. I, I know what you mean like it's, it's it's different for everybody um but one of the things i wanted to, sh- to bring up real quick was uh what we were just talking about when it comes to um, just people too. I think like what's important to know is like when you're on this journey and when you're doing your thing and you're, you're, you're fucking just focused, you're disciplined, you're consistent. I think people naturally either, they're either going to be like, it's a polarized kind of reaction. I think what happens is people either get really intimidated by you and they're like, Whoa, this guy's a little too much. And like, they, they want to back away and they get scared or they get whatever it brings out their own insecurities and stuff, or they get really inspired and they're like, yo, like I gotta be on what this guy's on. And they get, Mm -hmm. they're like on your team almost, even though you don't Mm -hmm. need to be a total stranger, but because they see that you're so locked in, it almost brings that out in them to, Mm -hmm. to want to be better. And I've met countless, countless people where maybe they were doing more than me. I was doing more than them, but they had that, like that, that spark inside of them. And like, once they saw that, or once I saw that in them, it was like an instant connection. Like it'd be a total person I never met before, but we sometimes had more in common than people I knew my entire life. Mm-hmm. So what's crazy about that is like, as you are doing something, other people see it. You're basically going to make them want to be on that level too. It could be a really inspiring thing. It definitely, it definitely is. And I'll tell you that it's, it's very easy to push some people away. You know, I had an ex-girlfriend that when we were kind of like in the last days of our relationship, Mm -hmm. it was, it was, I was working on my business and I had to work a lot because I needed to fund my business and I, I wanted to work out like there's things that are important to me. Like what comes before everything is, you know, my sleep is really important to me for what I need. Mm -hmm. I have to be exercising on a regular basis and I need to sometimes have my alone time and I need to have yeah. thinking time. I can't be doing things all right. the time. And so when I kind of realized that I was getting out of whack with all those things and things were suffering, I said to her, I was like, I, we're going to have to like chill. I'm not going to be able to spend every day off with you. Like I need some time to myself. Mm-hmm. I need this. And she's like, well, it's just not going to like work for me. <laughs> and I'm like, well, too fucking bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, I remember it just, I mean, it was a lot worse than that, but basically mm-hmm. that was, that was part of what happened was, yeah. um, 
I was like, I think we need to spend a little bit less time together. I need to be focused on my thing and then we'll come back and it'll be healthier for both of us. And she's like, well, I think we need to spend more time together. And I'm like, <laughs> no. I remember I was like, I was like dumped on it. I'm sitting there and I'm just like, how the yeah. fuck can we spend more time? I literally spent every waking extra moment with you. I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're going to have people like that. And then yeah. you're going to have, you're going to have people like this girl I'm seeing now. Thank you. I respect it. It's fucking alpha king shit that you're right. out here doing that shit gets me wet like i mean mm -hmm. not to be i'm probably being a little vulgar <laughs> but like that shit that turns me on you right. know what i mean like that's the type of person that's going to be in my corner so she's inspired by it she wants to do more she she's like how, how what can i do with my diet what can i do blah 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 you know how can i learn more like we're both kind of that person is someone that i'm like all right this conversation can be with me and then the mm -hmm. other people are gonna be like well you're stuck up arrogant cock like you think you're better than everybody because you're not drinking like right and you work out and you're disciplined and you don't think negatively and blah 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 whatever mm -hmm. dude you go do you your life sucks anyway so go have fucking fun being a loser not mm -hmm. to be mean not to be mean i am a little like when it comes to this competitiveness it's like i listen i like those types of people because it, it puts an enemy in front of me and it's almost like again <laughs> yeah. motivation you know what i mean i kind of like stomping those people a little bit you know it's like you want to mm -hmm. you want because you're out there they're bullies to other people and they're trying to bully me and they yeah. don't realize that I will stomp the fuck out of them. And it won't be physically. It'll be mentally. So they never fucking forget it. How much better my life is going to be than theirs. And that's mm -hmm. motivation for me. Take mm -hmm. it as you wish. People can think whatever they want. But that's just my dark side motivation. Anyway. But yeah, you're going to repel and you're going yeah. to you're going to attract. And you're going to repel people just like a magnet. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> the, the dark side motivation. I actually might make a video about that because that's like a whole... That's a whole other topic that we can even get into, to be honest. Good, good stuff. It's but very good stuff. It is. It can be. It can be very powerful if you use it the right way. Mm -hmm. um, but you're, yeah, I think you're dead on, man. Like, there's been people where I, sometimes I even get hesitant to tell people what I do and like how I'm doing it because I don't know what their reaction is going to be. They're either going to be like, mm -hmm. "Dude, that's fucking awesome!" Like, tell me more. Or they're going to be like, "Oh, what's a fucking life coach? What, why do you work with men?" Like, they get real weirded out by it. Mm -hmm. So. I've seen both ends of the spectrum. So like, I just try to tell people very basically what I do. Like, oh yeah, I help guys build self-development. I help guys build confidence through like personal development, try to keep it real vanilla. Mm -hmm. And like, depending on what they say to that, if they want to go deeper, they will. If not, you know, we kind of keep it moving. But I think it's important to, to understand like the kind of people you want in your corner and in your life too. That's also another piece of, consistency because if you're consistent more than likely you're going to attract people into your life that are also consistent that are also on a similar wave um and if you're not that kind of tells you well what am i doing like why do i even have like we were saying about the friend analogy earlier if you hang out with a bunch of guys that are just eating fucking cheetos every day playing video games not working on themselves not trying to go hard not trying to make any money why why are you attracting those kind of people why are they around you what is like how was that environment set up the way it is and mm -hmm. i don't think enough guys ask that question it was like you really do attract the kind of people that you are and like mm -hmm. i think every like everything that happened not everything but like the majority of things that are in your environment i think are our responsibility mm -hmm. yeah very good point excuse me and another thing about when you do become a consistent person, I'll leave you guys with some action steps to take yeah. um, some specific things you can start to do to kind of evaluate where you are. But, you know, another cool thing is that, so I have, uh, two, like I said, two younger brothers. I've done 75 hard. I've always been relatively healthy for multiple years. But recently, my brother, Zachary, is 21. He finished 75 hard uh, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. He lost 30 pounds. Looks amazing. Muscular. Now he's in the gym consistently. And then my brother Nicholas, the ripple effect is crazy because now my brother Nicholas, he's 15. He started at 220, big boy. Hmm. He's down to like 180 in the last like three and a half months. And like, wow. it's crazy. And so then he's getting into shape, starting to go to the gym more, eat, not eating junk. And then now my mom is like the last person in our family to be like, man, I can't be left behind. And so I right. got to kind of, so now she's making adjustments hmm. and it's crazy. She's getting into better shape. And so by being consistent and doing what you need to do, you're going to start off being under, misunderstood and then they're going to admire you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It starts off with being misunderstood. Then you're probably going to get some hate and then you're going to become admired and, and replicated. Yeah. And so 
here's a couple of things that you can do to become consistent and kind of change, you know, to understand. Cause I think it all starts with vision and understanding where you want to go. You got to pick out wh what you want and then you need to assess yourself and figure out very systematically. Do you fall into the motivated, disciplined or diligent category in every area of your life? Or do you fall into no action at all? Mm -hmm. And then you need to start making a list of things. Like if I was the type of person who did, who, who had abs, what would I do? Or if mm -hmm. I was the type of person who pulled and talked to girls, what would I be doing? If mm -hmm. I was the type of guy who had good style, what would I do? Mm -hmm. And so the, here's, here's step one. I want you to go through and I want you to rate yourself in the categories of faith, family, friends, finances, and fitness. Go through those five and figure out very specifically where you are on the no action, disciplined, motivated, or diligent side. Mm. Second, second, I want you to ask yourself the question, if I was the type of person who did X, what would that look like? What would their life look like? If I was the type of person who was, you know, had a six pack and was ripped, what would I be doing? If I was the type of person with impeccable style, what would I do? If mm. I was the type of person who had money in the bank, what would I be doing? And start asking yourself these questions. And then what you're going to do is you're going to work backwards and you're going to create a plan for yourself. So once you've answered yourself, you've assessed where you are, you're going to then figure out how to get where you want to go. So you got to figure mm. out where you are first and then you got to figure out where, how you're going to get there. So you're going to start at Z, you're going to find Z, you're going to go all the way back to A and then you go A, B, C, D, E and on. And you're going to step by step, figure out baby steps on a daily consistent basis daily daily do mm -hmm. not go bigger than daily do not go weekly do not go monthly worry about that shit afterwards mm -hmm. start with daily action steps all right and then what you're going to do is you're going to work that plan every day keep it simple keep it to like five tasks maximum but do them every day all right get a notebook write them down check them off as you go through and what you're going to notice is as you do one day and you do all five things you won if you move on to two days, you do all five, you won again. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, if you do five out of seven days, you've officially won the week. Mm -hmm. And if you and if you win three to four of the weeks out of the month, you've won the month. And if you win 10 out of the 12 months, you win the year. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so then you stack wins and all of a sudden you've got consistent motivation and you've changed your identity. You've become the type of person who does the things that you wanted to do. So mm -hmm. those are really, that's really how I develop consistency. I'll give you an example. So I've been trying to think about my finances. My number one thing that I want in my life is I want to be under no one's thumb and I want to make all my money remotely. And I want to be able to make enough money where I'm a, I'm beyond abundant and I'm mm -hmm. making steps, I'm making steps towards that. A couple of years ago, I was getting my credit score fixed. And so I had to write down everything. I had to write down where I'm at. Okay. I had X amount of debt, had a couple thousand dollars worth of debt. I said, okay, mm -hmm. that's where I am. Where do I want to be? Well, I want to be at a 750 to 800 credit score. Okay, so what does that look like? That means I got to pay off all this debt. All right, how do I pay off this debt systematically? And how can I be consistent about it? Well, I did the debt snowball. I listened on lowest to highest. And I said, I'm going to start attacking the lowest balance. If it was $500, I was going to pay $500 as fast as I possibly could. As I worked through all those, all those balances, I got to the bottom. It was a $6,000 balance. <laughs> but by the end of it, by attacking it with consistency and purpose and focus, it was decimated. All of it was gone in under a month. Mm. So when mm. you make that plan and then my credit score went to like 780, was able to get a car with a fucking sick payment. Like, I mean, mm. so that's an example. I figured out where I was, how much action I was taking, and then I made a plan and then I was consistent with it. And the process of moving through and progressing is going to help you be motivated. It's like a self-fulfilling loop. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I, I kind of do something similar with my goals. Like I kind of have like a top three every day and I look at these three are like my fucking non-negotiables. Like I have to do these fucking no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have like some kind of secondary goals underneath. But I agree with the daily thing. Like, so I actually, I have it like broken down monthly, yearly, weekly, all that stuff. But what really matters is the daily because you're mm -hmm. looking at that per day because you're knowing all right tomorrow i gotta wake up at this time do this do this i gotta set up my schedule accordingly and um i recommend that guys do that the day before because yeah that's the more, big 
worst thing that you can do is to wake up and be like, all right, what am I doing today? Like I'm, gotta... I'm guilty of that sometimes. I'm guilty of that sometimes. And it's, I'll tell yeah. you what, it's a lot better when you, when you do it the night before. So much better. And I used, I used to be like that too, where I'd wake up and be like, all right, what's, what's today's objective. But like, I got into the habit of just writing things the night before. So I prepped my brain and I prepped everything just beforehand. It's like, I'm already seeing myself doing it. And I got write down, all right, I got to film, edit, you know, work out, whatever it is. And uh, it's already done because I'm already like, like I'm already like uh, warmed up to doing it. So when you wake up, you can get right into it. You don't have to waste any mental energy thinking about it, writing it down. You're already ready to go. Mm -hmm. So that's important too. It's just, it's like kind of having that pre night prep before that beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's very important. So yeah, consistency is, is key, man. It's it, something Here's another quote that I read in this book called 21 Qualities, 21 Indisputable, Indispensable Qualities of a Leader by John Maxwell. I just, it was one of my books I read for 75 hard. Mm -hmm. The quickest, the, uh, the longest way anywhere is a shortcut. Man, <laughs> that was a, that was a gut check for me because mm -hmm. I can tell I can tell you what, by trying to, to avoid the consistency and avoid the grind and all the things yeah. we're talking about, mm -hmm. I have cost myself thousands of dollars. I have cost myself years yeah and, and if i only understood this this concept a little bit sooner mm -hmm. trade trading is a great example if you try to over leverage i mean a thousand bucks yeah. two thousand bucks three thousand bucks is gone like that like you would not believe how fast it goes like money mm -hmm. doesn't mean shit to this market and it's brutal yeah. and so man business you're trying to cut corners you're trying to get this product whatever blah 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 yep cost you money and so the, sh the longest way anywhere is a shortcut. So the best mm -hmm. way to be where you want to be is, is consistency. My diet from January to March, May, great example. I tried to do the shortcuts, try to eat way less, blah, blah, blah. Didn't lose any weight. I started doing 75 hard every single day. The grind, I got in it. I'm doing it every day. Down 13 pounds. Crazy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's like a real life example of these things. So consistency, guys, is critical. Mm -hmm. I love that quote, dude. The longest way through anything is a shortcut. That, that's a fucking, that's a that's bar. That's a banger. Yeah. No, that <laughs> one, man, that one hit me. I remember I read it and I was like, oh, shit. I was yeah. like, I think I was at the laundromat doing my laundry and I was like, fuck. I was, I was like, man. It's true. That one hit me right where it hurt. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. that one. Because like, yeah, even in business, like if you try to, you know, you're trying to uh, create a program before you even know what the hell you're trying to sell. Like, what is your offer? You don't know your audience. You don't know their needs. And you're trying to make a, an offer. You're just like, yep. you know, it doesn't work because you're not ready. And like, yeah, yeah it's there's there's no shortcut in the, the consistency and the work and the grind. Like, you just got to go through it. And on the other side is the things you want. Yes, sir. But dude, I think that was an awesome segue to end it, man. I think that, I think I, I don't think we could really add anything more to the conversation. No, I think this is a good a good spot to start. I hope everybody watching takes action on those uh, action steps. And yeah. if you want to, um, I can even type those out and you can post it somewhere as a link for like a worksheet or something. You yeah. know, the the assessment of your life to see if you're being consistent and how you can be more consistent. I think it'd be mm -hmm. important for everybody. Fuck yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something I could even offer clients or anything like a pdf or something like that be sweet mm -hmm. yeah definitely but yeah i'll definitely yeah shoot that over or like i'll i'll type it up or whatever we'll get it we'll get it posted sounds good to me man solid so yeah i think that was an awesome way to end it or just about the top of the hour um if you guys missed and tuning in late you know definitely go back and check out the recording because there's a ton of things that we talked about all gems all actionable things you can apply today not tomorrow but things you can literally start doing right now um so go check it out give the video a thumbs up all that fun youtube stuff uh, for the people that want to find you and go further where can uh where can we find you on social media yeah you can find me across all platforms TikTok, uh instagram snapchat and facebook just at christopher c-h-r-x-t-o-p-h-e-r-r -R. that's nice. C H R X T O P H E R R. I thought it was clever. X kind of like Chris Cross finishes out Chris. Thought that was clever. <laughs> Turns out Christina Aguilera does the same thing. So I didn't learn that until recently. So really? I guess I guess it was more clever than I thought. She has C H C R X whatever you know. So I was like, 
Smart girl, smart girl. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can find me there anywhere. Dope. Yeah, and again, guys, I'll leave his stuff down below to link it. If you guys want to find him, search more. And obviously, all my links are in the description. You know how it goes. Um, coaching, you want to join my men's Facebook group, all that stuff's down there. But um, I want to thank Chris again for hopping on the live stream. This was a dope conversation and uh, definitely want to do this again. I think what my my plan is for, for these streams is to eventually have a panel where there's maybe two, three, four of us on at a time. And we're just like riffing, going back and forth. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd love you to be a part of it. Hey, I'm always down. You know, you, you're providing a lot of great value for people. And you are doing something very important for today's society. You're helping men become the best version of themselves and yeah. giving them information from different perspectives and outcomes. And it's mm -hmm. very important that people do that. So yeah, please, please include me. I'm excited to see where everything goes for you. 100%, man. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a hell of a journey. But man, like you said, um, one that you can't shortcut and uh i'm i'm probably going to be posting daily for the rest of the well definitely the rest of july i'm going to be doing daily and uh fuck my, maybe even august we'll see what happens but uh hey might as well um, don't stop that's what i'm saying like i just feel like this summer is just the time to just go nuts with this content keep it going keep it pushing hell yeah if you if you're working i'm working just always remember that <laughs> right i've been thinking about that since the last time you said it yeah if you're working i'm working love that fuck yeah cool man well all right guys uh this wraps up the live stream chris thank you again for hopping on man really appreciate it and uh welcome guys be sure to tune in next saturday i've got live streams every single saturday so catch you all in the next one sweet thanks guys